I think we can all think about that one girl who is truly magnetic, not even from a physical standpoint, but something about her energy, something about her soul. You are just pulled in. You feel so welcome, so loved, so accepted when you're around her. Maybe to the point where you wish that you were more like her. And if you want to know some of the secrets that she has in order for her to actually be that magnetizing person, to have that magnetizing aura, then this video is going to be for you. But first, if you're new here, my name is Alicia Gogan. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week about the internal globe, the external globe. We talk about self-love, healing, all that good stuff. So on my journey of glowing up into the best version of myself, I mean, my podcast is called The Glow Up Secret. So we're always talking about the glow up. There's definitely things that I've transformed about myself internally and externally that really, in my opinion, has made me way more magnetizing. Magnetizing to new people, friends, men, money, opportunities. So many good things have come out of my life based off of certain things that I've changed within my internal state, even as well as my external state. And I wanna talk about some of those things. Now, I wanna make a disclaimer. Learning to be more magnetic, especially as a woman, the goal doesn't need to just be magnetic to get someone to like you, to get someone to accept you. This is more about honestly having an internal state of peace and love for yourself. And I truly think once we do that internal change, we start to see our environment, the people, the places, the things around us start to change as well. Dylan James always says in his videos, become the change that you're wanting to see in others or something of the sort. And I think that is so true. The more I focused on my own self and what I can control, only then did I really start to see the universe reflecting back to me what I actually was. So if you want more peace, more abundance, more love, more joy in your life, then let's get into it. I first wanna talk about the internal state because y'all know we are not gonna talk about anything external until we talk about what's going on in here and actually really in here. So here's a few tips on how you can become more magnetic when it comes to your spirit. The first thing is to learn how to take a compliment. Now you might be like, why? That doesn't make any sense. But listen, when you are in the energy of receiving, you are magnetizing, right? You're bringing things in, you're bringing abundance, you're bringing people into you. Instead of when somebody gives you a compliment, you're instantly being like, no, can't take it, or like deflecting it and pushing it away. But the second part of that is when you actually really receive a compliment from somebody, whether that be something about your physical appearance, something about your personality, something that you've achieved, anything, it doesn't have to just be this egotistical type of compliment. When you actually look someone in the eye and really receive it, thank them, sit and bask in that energy, you're actually allowing that person to feel seen as well. When you deflect a compliment or you don't really know how to receive things and somebody's genuinely giving you something, it feels to them like they're getting blocked off, like they're getting pushed back. And that's not very magnetizing. So the next time somebody compliments you, truly just accept it. Give yourself a moment to let that sink in. Think about what they are complimenting you on and almost compliment yourself for achieving that thing or having that thing or whatever it is. Now this leads into listening to others and taking other people's perspectives into your own. Genuinely listening to what somebody has to say and not from a place of I'm only listening to respond makes people feel very seen. And when people feel seen from you, they feel like they're comfortable to come back again. They wanna come talk to you. They feel like you're not judging them. If you're somebody who doesn't wanna listen to what people have to say, and this is also not to say that you have to agree with somebody's perspective, but if you won't even be able to hold the space for somebody, then you're not really gonna be that magnetizing. Now listen, this doesn't mean that you always have to do this with everyone. Maybe you don't need to be magnetizing to certain people sometimes, but Again, this is if you wanna be magnetizing, and I'm sure there's been instances where we probably could have taken somebody's perspective in a little bit more, listened to them a little bit more, myself included, and we didn't, and I'm sure, you know, maybe that person thought, okay, ooh, maybe I'm not gonna say that next time, or maybe I'm not gonna to go to that person for this thing. The next thing that I think is so magnetizing is to be humble, but not in the way of when somebody compliments you and you play it down and you push it away. 
Like we already said, when somebody compliments you, you're taking it in, you're receiving it. Thank you so much. Like you're really basking in that because you, you matter for one and you should really receive that compliment. But let's say somebody compliments you and you're not really humble. So you say, yeah, I know I'm so good at this, whatever. But to a point where you're kind of putting yourself on this high pedestal and creating space from that person to the point where they feel like they could never actually achieve what you have achieved because you are saying like, yeah, I know I'm so good. I'm the best and like, you can't be like me. Like I'm so much better than you. That's what I mean when I'm talking about being humble. I think there's nothing more magnetizing than being a person where respectfully, you're going to receive that compliment, take that respect where respect is due, but also being that motivation and inspiration to people where they actually look up to you and they feel like they can actually achieve something that you have gotten. I would much rather somebody come to me and look up to me and compliment me and say, wow, you've done amazing things. I really aspire to be like you and feel like they could come back and they can continue to be inspired by me. I don't ever wanna make somebody feel like they can't grow in life. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean that I'm going to tell everyone, yeah, you can be exactly like me. Everyone is different, everyone is unique, but I would rather instill a lot of optimism, a lot of positivity, a lot of validation into people than to make them feel as if they could never get to any level of success or be successful in any way in their own life. And again, it's just not very magnetizing when you are that person because people think, well, she's untouchable. She thinks she's so much better than everyone else. She actually doesn't even believe in me at all. Well, I'm not gonna go to this person. I don't feel comfortable going to this person. I don't even wanna look up to this person. My next tip would simply to be nice to people. Now, this might seem very repetitive to hear, but I think about sometimes when I walk down the street and I see people and they'll look at me and some dirtiest looks I've ever seen in my life. For no reason, they're just, that's that and I'm smiling and there's some times where I'm walking and I'm not really noticing anything and I haven't been smiling and somebody smiles at me there's been times where I've not smiled back and you can tell instantly they kind of get let down and they kind of look the other way or whatever and that's because I just like wasn't really looking and sometimes you know I'm just like distracted whatever but I make it a point when I'm walking down the street and people are looking at me I'm just smiling to them. I'm being nice, I'm being open. And watch the way people transform when you just simply look at them and smile at them. Now, not every single person is going to do that, but I think if you move through life in that energy of openness, of I'm not somebody to be afraid of, so many good things can come to you. Let's say you were at a social event, let's say not walking down the street and you're very closed off. The only way that you might get an opportunity to talk to one person who knows this person, who knows this person that could get you this opportunity that you've actually really been wanting in your career, you have to be open. You have to look around and have conversations and smile and whatever, not in a fake way, but just being open. Being open to other people, bringing you new ideas or new conversations or new whatever it is for you to get what you really want in your life as well. And again, if you're closed off, you're not magnetizing. People are gonna see you and not wanna talk to you. They're gonna be afraid, they don't know, they whatever. And again, when it comes back to you wanting something in your life, this is obviously not to just be used when only when you want something are you gonna be nice to somebody, but it honestly opens a lot of doors when your energy is very much so open. Another tip would be to be valuable to others. Again, another disclaimer. This is not going to be used in every single circumstance, but it's very true that when you have something of value that you can give to others in a very helpful way, people are going to want more of you. People are going to want to come back to you. People feel comfortable to you. You're valuable. You're giving good advice. You're giving good tips on career. Whatever you have, that skill, that knowledge, that wisdom that you have, people are going to want to come back to you. Even if it isn't something tangible that you can think about, just your presence in general. And I feel like I've gotten to a point in my love life, but also in my career, that I've really learned to stand in my worth and back myself and know what my value is to a point where I know when I'm giving somebody something of value, 
they're not really gonna get it anywhere else. And if they do, then that's great, then we're probably not meant to be and whatever. But I've gotten to that level of knowing my worth, of knowing that what I am giving to you, you're not just going to get anywhere else. These internal shifts that I have made in my life, honestly, has gotten me such better relationships, such better friendships, such better opportunities, money, everything. And I just personally believe being somebody who is closed off, who is mean, who is judgmental, who is unmotivating, who is just not necessarily in the best spirits. It's very hard sometimes for you to, you know, bring things towards you, bring love, bring friendship, bring connection, bring money to you. And again, this doesn't mean that you're going to always be like this, nor should you have to. And there's going to be times where you're going to need boundaries and you can't let every single person in and you can't always listen to everyone. But honestly, if you want to be magnetic and, you know, have the life that you probably dream of having on your Pinterest board, then there's going to need to be some internal shift before you see it in other people. We are always so concerned with, oh, well, that person is not coming to talk to me or, you know, I don't make these type of friends or I can't find these men or money's, there's no money anytime or there's no opportunities, blah, 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 blah. Well, what's your internal state? How open are you? How receiving are you? Maybe not so much. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the external. Because you know what? I'm not going to pretend like being magnetizing doesn't have to do with your physical appearance, but not the way that we have been taught online, social media, media in general. I used to think being magnetic, you had to have your makeup done to the nine, you had to have the best hair, the best outfit, you had to have this social profile, and you just always had to be to the nines. And over the years, I have learned through constant compliments and everyone always telling me, you know, you look so amazing and magnetizing and whatever, it's way less to do with that makeup and all of these things and more to do with your internal health. So tomorrow is Sunday and it's going to be my self-care day where I'm really just focusing on certain things that I like to for the week to come. And I'm gonna walk you through some of the things that I really put my focus onto in order to help me truly be magnetizing and truly be healthy versus how I used to when I was younger and I just thought, oh my gosh, I need to look like that girl on my Tumblr blog. Hi guys, it is Sunday and it's self-care Sunday. So I thought what better time than now to do this second part of the magnetizing, glow up, physical attraction. So probably around 2017, 2018, when I started to learn more about holistic health and healing my relationship with food, healing my relationship with my body image, social media addiction, all that stuff, I started moving away from thinking that I had to wear so much makeup and manipulate my hair like crazy or try to look like someone else and instead actually focus on enhancing my own natural beauty. And a lot of that has to do with being healthy. One of the biggest compliments that I will get from people is that you look so healthy or like so radiating. And I remember when I first did YouTube back in the day, I only did it for I don't even know, maybe like a few months. Like I didn't have a following at all. And I was playing back one of my videos to my mom and she was looking at me and she was like, wow, you look so healthy. Like the I, the whites of your eyes look really healthy. Your skin looks healthy. Your, your teeth look healthy. And for the first time I was like, oh, that's very interesting because if I look at that video, I would have just thought you would look at me and say, maybe I'm pretty because of how I did my makeup. Now doing your makeup is totally fine and it can totally be an attraction pull and I love doing my makeup and whatever. But once I started to realize that I was like, wait, I can just focus on making sure I'm the most healthy as possible and that will truly radiate and that will truly be a part of the way that I magnetize people. And that's how I've kind of lived my life. So when it comes to being magnetizing, I truly focus on my health, my hair health, my skin health, my body health, like my physical body, and overall just taking care of myself and just nurturing myself and my natural beauty as much as I can. When I say natural beauty, I wanna be careful with what I say here because I do wear a hairpiece sometimes. 
I do wear makeup sometimes. Like it's totally fine if you do that. Everyone's going to be a little bit different, but I just think that if we start focusing on making sure our hair is as healthy as we can get it, our skin is as healthy as we can get it, our body is as healthy as we can get it, then it's truly going to make an impact in how you feel, your own health, but also just be that magnetizing woman. With that said, we're gonna talk about a few things that I like to focus on. So for one, I just came out of the shower and I have, I have the turban towel, like always. Like you never not see me in this thing. I honestly need, I need to get more of these. Anyways, I, okay, actually hold up. Let me bring it back. I have natural curly hair. And when I mean curly hair, I mean like four B, C curls, okay? And I've had a super long journey with my hair. I used to hate my natural hair. I grew up in a predominantly white environment. I wanted straight hair like all the girlies, got perms ruined my hair like that's a whole video for another day a whole nother video for another self-care day i feel but it's taken me a long time to really learn how to treat my hair and care for my hair and it's been so many years since i stopped manipulating my hair in a way that it's just not natural for it although i still do like the slick back and stuff like we'll get it whatever anyways so i've come a long way i love my hair somebody had commented on one of my videos that i i did on the cycle syncing video and they and i said for the first time because i had my hair up in like a poof and i was like talking about that because you guys have never really seen my hair like that unless you've watched some of my i don't know maybe one or two videos and they were like don't stop making excuses for your hair i don't remember word for word but they're kind of like stop hating she basically was saying like stop hating your hair like i have the same hair too and like don't make excuses you don't have to make excuses for it or explain your hair away and i and i see where she's coming from because in the black community i find and even like the mixed community um there is a lot of shame around having curly hair not all there's people who really embrace their natural hair and they love it, but there is a lot. And I used to be one of those people. I used to hate my natural hair and it's taken me a long time to get to where I'm at. And I just want to be clear for anyone when it comes to my hair, not like I need to, but I just want to talk about it quickly. I love my curly hair. I think it is so pretty. I think it is so healthy compared to what it was before. And when I do my hair and I change up my hair, like doing a slick back or I don't, I don't really wear wigs, but do braids, anything like that. It's really from a place of exploration and play. And I want to change up my look, not I hate my natural hair. I wish it was so different. I don't need it to be different. I can just change my hair when I want or keep it natural if I want. I will say though, I don't love my um, length that my natural hair will go to. And that's why I usually don't wear it out. There's actually many reasons. One being it is so, it's a lot to have your natural hair out when it's this curly. Um, but I actually don't, I don't really love the short hair look the same way even a white person with straight hair wouldn't like the, sometimes people don't like how their hair looks short. I don't really like it. So I don't usually wear it like that unless I'm doing a hairstyle that kind of retains that length. Either way, I've come a long way, but it takes a long time for me to do my hair, but it requires me to take the time to deep condition, to put it under a hot cap, to brush out my hair, to get the right products, to learn about my hair in order for it to be healthy. And I used to spend so much time wanting to have someone else's hair and just wishing and wondering until I was like, you know what? This is the hair that I have. Let me learn how to make it the most healthy it possibly can. And now I'm at a point where I, I love it. Even if I don't wear it out, I still feel so healthy knowing that my hair is taken care of and that it's not neglected the way that I used to neglect my hair. So with that said, lots of steps when it comes to like dealing with natural hair. I usually once a week will shampoo and deep condition, like brush through my hair, deep condition, have the hot cap, do the whole entire routine. And then through the week, I'm just, usually I'm getting my hair wet every day and putting product in it. But I have one day that's like dedicated to really working on my hair. It's a whole lot, it's a whole process, but I have to do it. Like that's just my hair and I love it. I definitely wanna start playing around with my natural hair a little bit more now that I have more time. When I was working two jobs, I just didn't really have that much time to spend hours a week on my hair constantly, but I still did my absolute best to keep my hair as natural and healthy as possible. So 
this is just a tip to you. Whatever type of hair that you have and however busy or not busy that you are, I think it's so important that you really prioritize the health of your hair. You might be struggling with breakage, maybe hair growth, whatever it is. Maybe you need to start looking into certain oils, doing massage techniques, um, doing deep conditioners, hot caps, whatever it is, there's probably something that your hair needs. And I think there's just nothing better than looking at healthy, beautiful hair. Now I'm gonna say this as well. If you are struggling right now with your hair and it's kind of feeling like it's out of your control, don't think that you are less than, that you're not magnetizing because maybe your hair's not growing right now or you're struggling with hair growth. I think the best thing that you can do is just know internally for yourself that you're doing your absolute best. You're trying to find answers, you're trying to get the products, you're trying to do what you can. I mean, if you are in this point of neglecting your hair because you just like, you're honestly just lazy, then you know what, so be it. But I think that other than that, don't get too down on yourself when your hair is not looking the best. My hair doesn't always look the best. There's definitely times where I've neglected my hair and I need to kind of focus more on that. So anyways, after I do what I'm gonna do here, I will be sitting under the hot cap and then I'm gonna go back into the shower section my hair, brush it out, put in my product, twist it up and put it like up for the night so my hair can soak and just get moisturized and just like literally soak in all the product till the next, till tomorrow when I wake up and there's gonna be no product in my hair. Like the way that my hair just soaks up everything, but that's what is needed. And I would like to do even more. Like eventually I'd like to do maybe like twice a week, but it's a lot. Anyways, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. Okay, another thing that I like to focus on is skin obviously, but I'm gonna talk about skin in just a little bit when I go into the washroom and actually put my products on. I know a lot of you guys ask me what I do with my skin. Right now, I just came out of the shower, like obviously I just said, and I actually just put jojoba oil all over my face because I'm gonna do my eyebrows and I'm going to do a little twinkle razor on my mustache here. I don't know if you guys use these, but these are freaking iconic. I get them from Amazon, I'll have them linked. Um, in the description. I'll have everything I, if I can linked, if I can find it. I literally can't talk when I'm doing this, but I don't do this that often. Oh my gosh, I used to use Nair on my mustache back in the day. And I kid you not, I used to have just like this light spot above my lip because that thing, that literally ruined my skin for so long because I was like hyper fixating on like, oh my God, I can't have mustaches. Um, I don't get that much hair on my mustache, but sometimes I do and I'm just like, okay, like let's just take it off. So it's literally so simple. And I find that doing jojoba, like putting jojoba oil um, on your skin while you're doing this really helps. I just went back and just got a little bit more oil. I like to put it on as soon as I'm done like razoring my face. <laughs> but I am gonna, I'm gonna end up washing this oil off anyways and do my skincare afterwards. So I used to honestly like dermaplan my face. I would like go around and do everything. I don't, I feel like it's just really not needed unless you just go for, to a professional. I think you probably should anyways, but sometimes I'll just go in and like, if there's like any little hairs on my face, I don't know. I'm honestly lazy when it comes to this. But the eyebrows, girl. The eyebrows, it has been a journey. People ask me what I do with my eyebrows. I do my own eyebrows. Listen, I'm gonna find some photos and put them on the freaking screen right now. It's a journey, okay? I used to have those tiny little eyebrows. See, this is what I'm gonna talk about when it comes to eyebrows, even beauty, even when you do your, your makeup. It's a First of all, it's a journey. You're gonna have to learn your face and what look good, what looks good on you. But once you find what looks good on you, you look so much better in my opinion and just everything looks proper. If I didn't have the eyebrows that I had right now and I had the other ones that I used to have, I would look a lot different. And I'm not saying that, you know, I didn't look magnetizing then, but I don't know. I just think that learning what shape of eyebrows look good on you or like even, when it comes to eyeliner, I used to put thick eyeliner from like here all the way to do the, the wing. I learned over time, I actually start my wing like not even halfway, maybe like three quarters or wait, is that three quarters or one fourth? I don't know. I'm not good at math. 
I start very like right at the tip of my eye honestly and then do the wing now and it looks so much better my eye looks amazing because my eyes are so big and they're they're shaped a certain way that me putting this heavy eyeliner all across my eye and then winging it it's just way too much and that of course that took time for me to really learn but I think that I was trying to do what everyone else is doing without really taking in consideration like what looks good on my face. Not every look, makeup look is going to look or should look the same on everyone. So with that being said, I literally figured out, I drew, I remember back in the day, I drew on my eyebrow shape like kind of how it is right now. I drew that on my eyebrows to see how that would look on my face. And I was like, that's how I want to look. Like that's how I want my eyebrows to look. And from then on, I would fill in my eyebrows exactly like this. So it was like some, I was a big gap because I had very thin eyebrows. I would literally just draw on my eyebrows exactly how I wanted to. And because I pluck my own eyebrows, I don't usually, I well, I never get them done now, but I even back then I didn't really get them done that much. I would only pluck outside of the shape that I created for myself. And over time, my eyebrows started to fill in that area that I was um, drawing out to the point where I no longer needed to fill in my eyebrows like that. And it took a while, <laughs> it took a while, but we're finally here and I really don't need to fill in my eyebrows. I don't feel, I never actually fill in my eyebrows unless I'm doing a, a winged eyeliner and I'm going out just to make my eyebrows a little bit darker because I'm wearing mascara and I'm wearing like black eyeliner, but I don't need to. I just make sure that they are, they're nice and clean and trimmed and that's that. And I just think that it's not about me being like, oh, the natural look is what's gonna be magnetizing and, and wearing makeup is not like, no, but it's just like, it's so much easier for one and so much less maintenance to just be more of your natural self in the in the best way possible. And again, I do think that there's just something that is magnetizing about being your natural self, being your healthy self. And you could even argue, well, this is not really that natural because you are, um, you know, plucking your eyebrows and doing whatever. Totally understandable. When I mean natural though, I think you guys know what I mean. Like. It's just that natural but not look. I don't know. Anyways, whatever. Um, I use my tweezers sometimes. It's hard for me to explain kind of how I do my own eyebrows because again, it's just gonna be so different, but I have curly eyebrows. So I like to brush them up and like make sure that there's no little like curly ones coming out there. I don't spend too much time doing my eyebrows or plucking them, over plucking them. Oh my God, I used to over pluck them so much. I'll actually take the twinkle razor and just raise the top a little tiny bit. Oh my God, the way that I still used to do this when I was younger and completely like chop off my eyebrows. Like I was just doing way too much. I just do a little bit to clean it up. All I want is nice and clean. I use it a little bit under my eyebrows. I don't even know if you can see this. No, you can't see this. And then I like to just go in on the other side of my mirror. By the way, I think I got this mirror from Costco a long time ago, but I'm sure you can find this mirror anywhere. Okay, so I just washed my face. I look so tired, I'm not gonna lie, I just like woke up, like not long ago. So anyways, washed off the oil, and I'm gonna do a face mask. And this is from Benefit, and it's a deep retreat pore clearing clay mask. I got this from the Shoppers Beauty event, and I figured why not do it here. Wow, okay. So yeah, skin. My skin right now is really good and it has been for a, a while now. I'd say the past year, my skin's really kind of, um, e I don't even wanna say evened out, but like I don't really break out the way that I used to. I would break out sometimes on the sides of my face or just maybe on the chin sometimes. Um, so I definitely have had my fair share of just breakouts and like, you know, sometimes it's hormonal, but I find that I, when I was really struggling with my digestion, um, I had a lot of breakouts, especially around here and here. And if you actually like look up face, face mapping, like that is really where, oh my gosh, you look insane. Um, you know, so anyways, um, when it comes to skin, I really do my best to 
make sure that my skin is looking as natural as I can possibly get it. That's like, you know, I find like I feel the more, I feel the most magnetizing when my skin is healthy. And that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of you figuring out what products work for you. And also sometimes, I mean, a lot of the times it's your health too. It's not just what you put on your skin topically. And that might take a while, but again, it comes back to that hair thing. Well, I've been through times where my skin has not been good. I'll even show you some photos. And I had a different relationship with my skin though when I was breaking out versus like back in the day because I all I knew was I knew at that point I was doing as best as I I was doing as much as I can to learn about which products are going to help me I was trying to figure out what was wrong with my diet or wrong with my digestion like I knew I had certain factors that were affecting my skin and I wasn't I wasn't getting hard on myself now I know it's hard to not get hard on yourself because your skin is it's one of the most radiating things that can be about you but I think that as long as you're really focusing on taking care of your skin the best way that you can the best way that you can you can't get mad at yourself when you're not having a good skin day there's days where yeah my skin's not looking the best and I'm not gonna get down on myself I'm just gonna okay like what is my what does my skin need do I need to hydrate more do I need to put on some products do I need to check out what's going on with my diet like all that so oh my gosh I truly like, I don't even know why I'm talking because I look insane. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this sit and then I'm going to show you what I use, what I'm currently using on my skin. Cause I'm really, I feel like I'm getting back into my skincare um, vibes. I kind of stopped using skincare for a while because I'm just like, I feel like less is more with me. And I've kind of been into that like natural skincare stuff for a while, but um, yeah, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, I just washed that mask off. I'm gonna quickly mm, put on this toner that I'm using from Sukin. I'll have everything linked down below. Oh my gosh, my skin feels so great. But the thing is, this lighting in here, I don't really know how it is. Okay, also, I just made a coffee because like I said, it's so early this morning. Like it's literally 9.30 in the morning. I'm already talking to my camera. Next thing that I'm gonna use, which I always use every morning, is hyaluronic acid. Um, okay, let me just put it on my face first. Oh my gosh, this feels so good. So I don't know too much about skincare, okay guys? Like, I'm really like not a skincare guru. Um, I have learned like less is more with my skin and I've always tried to focus on how to get my skin the best possibly can through diet. Um, I've never really been consistent with much when it comes to skincare and so that's kind of my first focus whenever I am focusing on skin is to take a look at what I'm eating um, how my stress levels are but I have been recently getting more back into skincare I think sometimes when you are struggling with your skin it's good to just like neutralize everything and just not put on a bunch of stuff until you kind of like figure out what's going on and then slowly add in things at least that's what's happened or sorry what's worked for me anyways I'm using this Vici mineral 89 booster helpful apparently to keep in the water retention in your face or like your I don't even know. I'm not, I'm not, don't even ask me. I don't know. But um, what I usually do at night is I'll use this retinol. I'm just starting to use retinol. I'm 27. I want to keep my skin looking nice. Retinol, but this is at night. I have been using this other product. This new, sorry, this new product, which I'm going to put on now. Oh my God. Okay, listen. When I put on any moisturizer, sometimes I use my Sukin brightening moisturizer as well. Or like, it has like rose hip oil in it. No, sorry, not that one. But the other one has rose hip oil in it. Um, I usually just kind of use, I don't know. I usually, lately I've been using Sukin. I use Look Organic sometimes. Very, very natural, clean skin care. Um, but, what was I saying? Oh, whenever I use a moisturizer... I always have to put some sort of oil on top because my skin still feels a little bit dry and I know when your skin feels dry it's because you're stripping the oils and you know tone it back and um, like literally use toner to help balance the pH and whatever but no matter what I do I always need some sort of like oil like my skin loves oil I'm not afraid to use it with this I don't have to put oil on 
and my skin is so freaking moisturized i've never and the way that it feels on me i'm pressing it into my skin because like i don't know apparently it's better to do that and then i'm just like put it down my neck okay what is this called it's from svr laboratories it is from france it is very it's like 70 ish dollars i got this gifted to me at an event but I was like, you know what, I have so many other um, products that I was like, hey, you know what, let me just try this out. And I actually had talked to the lady who was showing me this product at the event and she was like this French lady and you could just tell it's just true, authentic, like they know what they're doing and they put some good ingredients in here. So anyways, go check it out if you want. It's called the Collagen Biotic and I don't know, a lot of it's in French, but this stuff is this is my go-to like until something can beat this I this makes my skin glowing like it's really unfortunate because you're not gonna be able to tell in this lighting unless I go into a different maybe I will go somewhere where there's like lighting this makes my skin freaking glow and what I usually do is I'll add some jojoba oil a little bit over top of my moisturizer because I feel like that's the only way that I feel very hydrated don't need it and then if I was going outside I would wear sunscreen but I'm not, I'm just staying inside. And some people will say, just put it on, even though you're inside, but whatever, I'm not really, I don't wanna put too much on my skin. So I found a little routine that works for me. I feel like when it comes, again, coming back to this feeling my uh, magnetizing and being magnetizing, I now feel my little two-step, three-step skincare routine, I feel very magnetizing. I feel like my skin is looking moisturized, alive again, from sleeping when I wake up in the morning my skin's looking a little dull because the moisture is just where's the moisture it's not there anymore so I just think when it comes to being magnetizing do your best with your skin okay take care of your skin when your skin is breaking out when your skin is not doing well it's a sign to look deeper and it might take you a while to figure out what that is and it's taken me a long time throughout the years to kind of balance that sometimes it's just a matter of balancing your hormones sometimes it's just you know that time of your month and you have a breakout one thing i will say that's really helped me anytime i do have a breakout which is really not often anymore is to not touch my breakouts i used to scar my face so much when i was younger when i would have a breakout because i would pick at it and I, I know people say this and it's really sometimes so hard to not do it but I just would tell myself like I'm going to make this breakout worse if I continue to play with it it's going to eventually pop or change or when it's really ready you always know when it's really ready and you always know when you're about to go in and it's just like yeah you're pushing it like it, it needs another day let your skin breathe and rest and do what it needs to do i think it's coming back to this like natural type of vibe that we have going here just sometimes we need to we need to work with our own skin and our own hair and our own health instead of pushing manipulating and like oh my gosh i have this event and this pimple needs to be gone so like let me just rapidly change it so that i can go to this event and i get it sometimes you might have to do things you don't have to but sometimes you might feel like you need to do that but i feel like thinking about the consequences of rushing yourself and not taking the time that your your body really needs to heal or to grow or to evolve I think you're doing yourself a disservice so I'm gonna go sit under the heat cap because it's been a while now probably for maybe like an hour or until I'm done drinking this coffee at least I'm gonna chill for a little bit and then we're gonna talk about health I have a few things that I want to quickly prep for the week and I'll see you there by the way this is my heat cap it is literally so old and I just cannot like I literally look like I have a box in my head um, I just put this onto high and then I'll just sit here and I'll put it on my head so I just came out of the shower and I twisted my hair these are already falling out um, this is what I do I'll section my hair and put a bunch of uh, leave-in conditioner and like all the good stuff and then just have my hair kind of like this or whatever I'm gonna do if I'm going to sleep then I'll put um I'll put my what's it called what is it called my silk bonnet my hair is just going to look how it's going to look it's not done this is not a style that i would just like be done with but it's self-care day i wanted to quickly talk about though my hair piece okay so i have this hair piece i just i just brush it out so it's very frizzy and 
One thing when it comes to any sort of fake hair, I used to wear extensions when I was younger, I wore wigs over the years, and I just found that, again, no matter what you're putting on your face, whether it's makeup, hair, outfit, whatever, try your best to have it be as good as quality as possible. I always find that if I have, if I'm wearing fake hair like this, and it's good quality and I spent my money on it and it's an investment, I feel so much more confident and magnetizing when I'm going out and I'm wearing something like this because I know it looks good, I know it looks real, not to say that I need to like trick people to think that it's my hair and anytime someone says anything about this hair I'm like yeah I got it here, but I remember the times where I would go out and my, if I wore like a fake ponytail or extensions or a wig or anything and it just didn't, it wasn't good quality, I felt so self-conscious because I knew it wasn't, it didn't look that good. So my tip is if you do invest your money in any sort of hair piece, I would highly suggest that you put away some of your money each month to save up to buy something that is going to be long lasting, long wearing and actually really look good. And this is honestly outside of like what other people think, it's how you feel. Like how do you feel when you wear something that's like more expensive, more luxury, more high quality? I've been slowly trying to do that with my products, with my food, with my clothing. I'm not completely there yet, even with bags. I even said in one of my videos that I want to get a designer bag soon, but we're just not there yet. But eventually over time, I want to invest my money into higher quality things. And I really think that does make a difference in your confidence, but I totally understand not everyone is there and not everyone can do it but then my tip is try your best to make things learn how to make things look as good as possible if you do have to wear maybe like a cheaper hairstyle or like you know maybe your makeup is not like the best quality like there's still ways that you can go on YouTube and find somebody styling something that really makes it look as good as you possibly can like take your time with things so anyways this hair piece not sponsored I wish they did but this is from Luxie Hair. This is originally like $300. And I think they're actually, I think they actually have a sale. I posted it on my story. I don't know if they're gonna have the sale by now, but it was like 40% off, which is good. I've had this hair for I think, I wanna say six months. And it is exactly the same as how I bought it. And they even said like it only might last a few months. I think they just say that just because whatever. But this is literally such a game changer for me. First of all, I've explained to you a million times when I do my slick back ponytails, I just like clip it into my hair and I wrap this thing around. Like it looks so good. But when it gets a few, when I wear it for a few times, let's say I wear it like a few times during the week and it will get a little bit matty, I'll brush it out, which I just did. That's why it looks like this. It doesn't usually look like this. I'll just brush it out, obviously the ends all the way up and then I'll rinse it in water. I'll put a little bit of conditioner in it and um, a little bit of product and then I'll show you what it looks like after it's insane. Okay, you really are not gonna be able to tell too much about how this looks until it's dried, but the quality of this hair is truly insane. Like every single time I wash it, it comes out exactly how it came and maybe I can show you guys, I don't know, um, how it will look like when it's actually all dried. It's actually ombre a little tiny bit, but it, it goes really well with my hair. I would say this is a little bit more brown than my hair, but not, like it still literally blends so incredibly well. So anyways, I love this piece. Okay, let's talk about food. I think your diet and what you eat, what you put into your body is going to be one of the most important things when it comes to health, obviously. I have not always had a healthy relationship with food. I've talked about that plenty of times on my channel and I'll have that video linked down below if you wanna know more about that. But I really know the benefits of eating from home, making your own food, and how that really does affect your digestion, which affects your skin, which affects your energy, which affects everything. So again, I think it comes back to, you know, what are you pouring into yourself? How are you nurturing yourself? And when you really do that, you end up flourishing. It's like a, it's literally like a flower. There's a little seed, you start to put the water, the nutrients, the soil, everything, the sunlight, and eventually it blooms. And when it blooms, you walk past that flower and you're like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Smelling it, just feeling like you're so indulged in nature. Like that's how I think about being magnetizing. So 
I make sure to eat majority of my food from home because honestly it just sits well with my stomach, my digestion when I eat from home versus eating out. And I don't eat any particular way other than once I've healed my relationship with food, honestly, I move way more towards healthier foods naturally. I don't have to force myself or tell myself to crave healthy food, I just do. So this week I'm going to make grass fed. I'm not gonna show you like everything and how I'm making things because it's just a lot. I'm gonna quickly tell you and also follow me on Instagram if you wanna see my food ideas and stuff. A lot of you guys have been asking for like quick meal ideas. I am a creature of habit, but I also usually go with my flow as well. So I'm right now in my luteal phase, which if you wanna understand more of your menstrual cycle and all your phases, I'll link that video down below as well. And with that said, I'm luteal is like right before you menstruate and it's good to have like warming cooked foods root vegetables things of that nature but I also still have some food from well I actually got a few groceries and I still want to make a Greek salad so anyways I'm gonna make gra grass-fed ground beef I eat meat I have dairy and and the right amount of portions everything's balanced whatever I think that there's so much benefit in eating meat and high quality this actually this is another thing I make sure that I invest my money in very high quality food. That's just where I'm at. Even the stuff that I have right now, I have grass fed Australian beef, and this is from a place where I could still get it even higher quality than that um, in the city, but we're working with what we have. That's another tip. If you're like really struggling with your relationship with food, don't hyper obsess and hyper focus on like how organic this is and that, just don't. But I do think that it's important as much as you can to have that high quality types of food that's really going to nurture yourself. So I'm gonna make a gra grass fed ground beef, just cook it up on the stove, add some pink salt, some onion powder, whatever, just random ingredients. I don't follow recipes like the Pinterest recipes that tell you this and this, can't do it, don't have time, don't wanna do it. So I'm gonna make that and I'm gonna pair it with broccoli and sweet potato. I'm going to cut these up, wash them, put some olive oil on it, again, season, and then put it in the oven and roast them. So that's going to be like option. That's like going to be like meal one. I usually like to have one or two prepped meals. I don't tell myself that I need to eat one in for lunch and one for dinner. I just have it so that I can eat whenever I want. The next thing that I'm going to have is a Greek salad I've been making, simply cutting up a cucumber and some grape tomatoes and I don't like olives, so we're not doing that. Sometimes I'll put bell pepper in that, but I'm gonna use that for something else. And then I add feta cheese, and I, and I literally just make a big bowl. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And I make my own homemade dressing. It's simply extra virgin olive oil, and what is it, balsamic vine vinaigrette, and I add some pink salt and some any seasoning that I want that I think that would taste good, and that's it. I usually put more balsamic vinaigrette than oil, olive oil. I just don't really love the taste of olive oil when it's like very, very strong. Um, no measurements, I just mix it up, and I put that on the salad. So I like to, again, have these throughout the week so that I'm, you know, feeling my body, fueling my body correctly. I know that I'm getting my nutrients in, and that's that. Also, for breakfast, it depends. If I'm really lazy, I'll have free range eggs with some toast, which I always have, like my, I put my bread in my freezer so it just doesn't go bad because I don't eat it all the time. Sometimes I'll have avocado, so I'll have avocado toast if I don't want the egg. Or I'll do like a quick stir fry. So what I'll usually do, which I'm going to do, and I still have, but um, I have a bell pepper and some mushrooms. I'm gonna cut these all up and prep them and put them in my fridge so every morning, I'll just throw them on the stove and cook them up. So I'll put coconut oil, pro tip, use coconut oil on your stove when you're cooking things, not extra virgin olive oil. What I'll do is I'll I'll have that, those ready, so I'll just throw them on the stove. I'll also add spinach if I have it, and cook those up, saute them up a little bit, put them on the plate, make some eggs, scramble them, whatever, and that's usually it. Sometimes I have a piece of toast with it, or I'll have plantain. I feel like, my my summer breakfast is plantain with avocado and sauteed mushrooms, bell peppers, some spinach, and eggs. Like that's the ideal breakfast I could eat every single day. But depending on the season, sometimes I can't find plantains that are good. But when I do, I will get them. And I usually, and what I do, a lot of people ask me how I make them. 
I literally just put coconut oil on the pan and fry them on one side until they're golden brown, flip them over and done. That's it. They taste so freaking good with a little bit of salt and uh, avocado. Or sometimes what I'll do too, is if I have ground beef that's ready, I'll like fry it a little bit with some vegetables and have it with plantain and avocado, done. Just done. A few snacks that I love is plain Greek yogurt. I will add in my own honey to sweeten it instead of getting the pre-bought yogurt with like the all of that additive stuff. I try and stay away from all the additive additive stuff, but again, I'm not perfect because of my history. So I do that and I'll add frozen blueberries, granola, pumpkin flax granola, but you can get any, it doesn't really matter and dark chocolate chips. That is like my freaking go-to. I've gotten so many of you guys addicted to that on my Instagram and you'll never go back if you try it. Like you honestly, you never will. Lately also, I've been having these rice cakes, cinnamon toast rice, rice cakes with some peanut butter if I want a snack. Sometimes I like to keep tortilla chips on hand with salsa and then I'll use plain Greek yogurt as my sour cream and I'll just have a little bit of that. Uh, dark chocolate, those are the kind of things that I kind of cycle through. It depends on the season. Like I know that in the spring, summer, I'll switch it up. Usually in the summer, I'm a smoothie girl. I am a big smoothie girl. I also love frozen grapes, but that's more of like a summer thing. So it really just depends. But this is what makes me feel at peace with my own health. And then when I'm at peace with my own health and it's really starting to show then I just, I feel like I'm more magnetizing. So I'm going to make all this and then I'll show you when it's done. Okay, so I made the Greek salad. Doesn't it look so freaking bomb? And I also did add a few bell peppers in that only because I couldn't fit it in this little container. And I didn't end up cutting up, actually I did half my tomatoes and cucumber and half the mushrooms because I have more still to use with the zucchini for my breakfast. And also because I'm cooking broccoli and sweet potato and my ground beef, I didn't want to make too much of this because I know myself and I know I won't eat all of it if it's all prepped and then I don't want it to go bad. So I might as well just keep it not cut until I'm ready. So that's that. Here's the roasted broccoli and sweet potato. I probably cooked that for maybe 20 minutes on medium heat in the oven. I don't know. I honestly wing things and then just the ground beef it doesn't look that cute, but it tastes so good together. So now that's all prepped, I'm going to clean up a little bit and honestly get my life together in terms of work. So I'm gonna edit this video. I'm also going to write out some workouts that I'm gonna be doing for this week. That's another thing when it comes to being magnetizing is taking care of your body right? Moving your body, having energy. The theme for this video really is an energetic state. And you know, when you are sitting at home and not moving your body and just very stuck and suppressing emotions or, you know, not eating right and not fueling your body, the energy is very low. And I think that when you think about somebody who's magnetizing, their energy is a lot. Doesn't mean that you're happy all the time and you're super ecstatic and you're nice all the time. Like it doesn't mean you need to use all the tips that I talked about at the beginning of this video. But I think that the more you incorporate some of the tips that I talked about and also really fueling yourself, nurturing yourself, you're just going to come off as somebody who is way more magnetizing and it doesn't take all of this money to do so. It takes, some mindset shifts and learning how to heal your body. And that can be through food, through movement, through taking care of your hair, learning what your hair type is and like what you need to do for your exact hair or even your face, your makeup, what looks good on you, try new things out and taking your time to prioritize learning how to do your makeup correctly or wear that a uh, hair piece that you really want to wear correctly and putting money away to really invest in something that you know you're going to feel good in or look good in i think that that's really what's helped me kind of be in this magnetizing era aura vibe energy whatever you want to call it so i was also thinking i could make a video on like my glow up routine and kind of really bring you through the step from getting into the shower all the way into the end as if I was like going out somewhere in terms of like makeup and things that I put on my body. 
um, hairstyles, things of that nature. So let me know. I feel like there's going to be a lot more of that content coming in the spring, summer. I don't know about you, but in the winter, it's very much so hibernation season for me. I'm wearing just like big cozy sweaters and track pants and I'm, I'm doing protective styles in my hair and I'm, I'm not wearing a lot of makeup. I don't usually wear a lot of makeup anyways. Even when I do, it's very like light foundation. I feel like I'm not wearing anything and I'm very minimal with my makeup. Not like it's, I'm like, better than anyone if I don't. But I think that in the summer, it's always so much more fun to play around with makeup and that glowy look. I love a glowy look. Like my body glowing, my makeup glowing, but in like a natural, but not natural glowy way. Uh, same with my hair. I'm excited to see what I can do with my hair. There's just so many things. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. Please let me know if you like this style of video. As you see on my channel, I'm starting to incorporate some sort of vlog type of vibe within the video so it's not just sit down. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to my podcast channel, The Glow Up Secrets Podcast. That is very much so the same type of content that I talk about on this channel, but it's very chit chatty. We do a lot of Q and A's, advice. I, I'm honestly just like some someone you're gonna put on on the weekends when you're cleaning or you're like, you need a good vibe to lift you up or, you know, it's, it's very healing content in my opinion. So definitely go check that out. I'll have that link down below. And also I think that if you're interested in this type of video of how to be magnetizing, you'll be really interested in the video that's on the screen, which is everything that you're getting wrong with feminine energy. I think that those tips in that video will really help you in terms of not falling too far into this idea of always having to be this magnetic, perfect person and show up correctly. So I hope you enjoy that video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.